大家好啊！我呢間咧就身處咧係呢個芬蘭嘅，咁今次好開心咧，請位嘉賓咧就係 Paula。咁佢本身咧就係呢個芬蘭裏面咧其中一個組織咧，就專招待咧外國人咧去了解一下芬蘭教育係點樣嘅。咁大家都知道啦，其實芬蘭咧都走向咧即係世界比較前瞻嘅，喺呢個教育制度上面咧都有啲幾唔錯嘅情況嘅。咁所以今日好開心咯，咁遠咧特登 book 咗佢哋咧嘅一個個 visit 啦，咁啊帶咗我去咧其中一間嘅學校裏面。算喺芬蘭裏面咧，投咗幾間比較大嘅學校咧，做一個探訪嘅。咁探訪完啦，咁呢個時間梗係同佢傾下偈啦。So, uh, hi, brother. I'm so happy to have an interview with you. Would you please share with us? It's talking about the Finnish education structure. In Finland, it's sort of divided into well, three stages. First is the early、uh, childhood education that starts normally when children are. Around one year old, but that's not—that's、um, voluntary.、Uh, it's part of the social services in Finland up to the age of six,、uh, and it's、uh, delivered in kindergartens.、Uh, most children go to kindergarten at latest when they are three,、um, up to the age of six, and then there is a compulsory、uh, preschool year from six to seven.、Um, That can be either、uh, delivered in kindergartens or in, in、uh, attached to primary schools. But what's、uh, a bit different in Finland、uh, compared to many other countries that children go to school only when they are seven, and then、uh, the compulsory education lasts for nine years,、um, and it's the same for all children or, or youngsters. There are no、uh, different lines or there. There are no level courses, so basically all children follow the same、uh, curriculum. Of course, there are options that they can choose, but、um, this nine-year education will give them all the,、um, the qualification to have to choose whatever path they want to take. So after the nine-year compulsory school, they either go to、uh, vocational、uh, schools or then the general. Upper secondary schools. The general upper sec- secondary school lasts for three years, and at the end of the upper secondary school, there is the matriculation exam, which is actually the only national exam that we're having in Finland. And and those who choose the vocational path,、um, there's always a possibility、uh, of.、Uh, There is a possibility, first of all, to do combined、uh, courses, which combines the vocational studies and、um, and the、uh, sort of upper secondary studies that they can do the matriculation exam also at the end of their vocational path. But even if they choose not to, they still have an access to higher studies after the vocational path. So、um, so after the、um, general, after the secondary education, then. There are possibilities to go to an academic university, sort of what we call the traditional universities, or then the universities of applied sciences, and they sort of concentrate.、Uh, there, normally in the universities of、um, applied sciences, the students graduate with bachelor's degree,、uh, and there is a closer link. I think the difference is that the, there is a closer link to the working life in the in these.、Um, Universities of Applied Sciences, but in Finland we very much、uh, believers of the、um, of the education throughout life.、Um, it's also possible to take up the studies later in life,、uh, in whatever level.、Uh, either go to go back to the upper secondary on、um, evening courses or day courses, or then、uh, take a leave of absence and、um, study. Further courses, or even do the whole degree, like I did myself a couple of years ago. The core values, I think,、um, uh, first of all, is the equality.、Um, all children must have an access to good quality education. That that is the basic value for everything. And that's also the reason why all education in Finland is free of charge. In、uh, compulsory education, free of charge means、uh, re- it really means free of charge. It means、uh, no fees, but also the books and the uh, uh, 
the textbooks and, and the pencil and everything that the child needs for studying is free of charge. It's provided by the, by the school. And also in Finnish schools, um, including the upper secondary school, uh, the municipality provides um, a free warm meal every day. And also the transportation, if a child lives further than three kilometers away from school, the transportation is provided by the municipality. So that's one, one thing that is sort of driving the whole, whole system is based on equality. As a small nation, I don't think we can afford losing the uh, intellectual, uh, intellectual um, uh, property in putting barriers uh, to access to education. We, we don't have, uh, have very little natural resources. Our resource is the human capital. And that's why um, it's important that no matter what the background of child is, it has an access to get good education. And we as a nation, we get the, the best out of all, all people who live in Good question. We don't traditionally, uh, we're not great believers in punishment. Of course, they do exist, but um, that's um, I think starting from the early childhood education, the aim is to um, help children to go grow independent, responsible. And, and have sort of inner discipline within them and when they know the rules and they, they know the, the, the reasons behind the rules and they sort of own the, role, uh, own the rules in a way that they can actually be part of designing and discussion then they really break the rules well of course they sometimes do I mean but this is not a this is not the um, a dreamland we're living in and then um, there is a they they very um, clearly stated in the in the curriculum and in, also in the law what the, what kind of punishments we can use and the first uh, sort of disciplinary measure that we can take is a pedagogical discussion that's how it's called so we take the child apart and we discuss what went wrong why why did this happen um, and how can we better the the, uh, the behavior and how can we avoid this this problem to uh, happen again and also we keep the parents very close by so we uh, at school we try to work together uh, with parents with families for the education of the child and of course then there there can be punishment in the most severe case um, child well the young people normally young person can be expelled from school for a couple of days or more, but they are very rare these measures yes um, also what we uh, what we believe in is that the um, the condition for good learning is that you have an open mind and that you relax and you have a possibility of reflecting uh, what you're learning. The whole concept of, um, of the whole sort of philosophy behind the Finnish education is this uh, social constructivism where the child builds on what he already knows and as all children are different so they have um, they already know something and then they build on top, top of that and in a relaxed atmosphere where everybody learns from each other the uh, good learning and lasting learning takes place and uh, as you're probably aware Finland uh, despite the fact that uh, the days aren't very long, the school days aren't very long, particularly in the primary level, level, and despite the fact that there is no inspection and there are no national tests, it has actually succeeded really well in uh, international studies uh, for 
learning achievement, for example, in PISA, PISA studies. Well, we just uh, adopted the new curriculum a uh, year and a half ago. Uh, also, the curriculum development is a bit special because the, the National Board of Education, well, actually nowadays called the National Agency for Education, sets up the core curriculum, which is formed together um, with uh, some teachers. And also, they ask uh, the, the greater public for their opinion. And then, when the core curriculum is published, then the schools do their own part, or the municipalities, which are the education providers. And then, um, but also the teachers very close, very work very closely in uh, designing the curriculum. So in this new curriculum, what what is the, the main trend is that there is more uh, different ways of learning. So. Um, giving possibility for children uh, or young people to find their way of learning and also what is very much in, um, put into focus is the um, working in different environments and different groups and also that everybody learns from each other. Um, teachers role is a bit different. Um, we can talk about mentors or guides instead of um, teachers it's the child that is in the center and the teacher is there to help the child in his or her learning process and um, what's also new you might have heard that rumors that Finland doesn't have any subjects anymore but that's actually not true as such we still have the school subjects but what is new that we have these interdisciplinary units or periods uh, that every child has an access every year and it should combine, combine more than one subject. And some schools have uh, various, have, have uh, more than one per year and some schools have decided they, that they do this one week when this phenomenal based learning takes place. So, so that's something, there is sort of a trend towards the um, lesser importance of individual subjects and, and um, more emphasis on learning, sort of holistic learning. So thank you Paula for sharing. You're welcome. 好開心啦,同阿Paula傾完之後,大家對呢個芬蘭嘅教育制度啦,同埋佢點樣去陪住佢哋嘅細路仔呢,有興趣嘅概念係咪?今日呢,時間差唔多啦,拜拜!